Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be trying to teach you guys DaVinci Resolve 14 video editing in roughly 20 minutes. So if you don't already know, DaVinci Resolve 14 is a free video editor that also has a professional version called Studio that costs $2.99. But the free version even is very comparable to software where you normally have to pay quite a bit of money to. I'm thinking apps like Adobe Premiere, which are very similar but do not have a free version whatsoever. Most of the things you can do in programs like that, you can even do in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and that's why I like it so much as a video editor. Uh, I don't think you can find a better free video editor out there. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to see when you open up DaVinci Resolve 14 is this little splash screen where you can see all of your previous projects that you've worked on. If you hover over one of those projects, uh, you might get a line that's going through it, but you can just ignore that. As long as you have the white box around your selection and you're hovering over it with the mouse cursor, that's what you're going to select to. So you go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. It's going to drop you on the Edit tab by default. The Edit tab is where you have the timeline, this basically giant section at the bottom, where you actually edit videos that you've put into the timeline. But in order to get clips, basically videos you've already taken, into DaVinci Resolve, you can do that either on the Edit tab or the Media tab if you prefer. The Media tab makes it a little bit easier to navigate through your computer, uh, basically giving some common areas where you might have videos, and you can also add in uh, network locations if you choose, or other drives on your computer. So if you were to click on one of these categories, you're going to see the folders and the video files that exist inside of them. Also, images and audio uh, files as well. So here I have a folder called CC for Creative Commons Videos I've grabbed off YouTube. And I grabbed this one, uh, Thailand Chiang Mai, just kind of a random vlog I found on YouTube. I'll put the link down in the description, of course, so you guys can check it out. And what we're going to do is take this video and drag it into the media pool. So by doing this, it's going to show up in the Edit tab. However, if the settings of that clip are different from your project, for instance, if the resolution in the clip is different, or if the frames per second is different, you can automatically have DaVinci Resolve adjust it for specifically this project by hitting change here. Uh, if you do want to keep the original frame rate settings that you have, then you can hit don't change. But in most cases, I would go ahead and hit change, especially if you're going to be working with only one video clip. So now we're going to go over to the edit tab, and you'll see that that video we imported is now showing up in the media pool which by default is in the top left hand corner. Now once you have clips there, you can select them once and turn off the inspector if it's open. That's in the top right hand corner. We'll talk a bit more about that later. But you can click on a clip in order to preview it in this left hand window and clips that already exist in the timeline down here that you want to preview will show up in the right hand menu. And notice that when we have the inspector uh, turned on that only the timeline clips are actually going to show here. So we have two options. One, we can drag the entire clip into the timeline and then start editing from there, which is fine if you know that the entire video is something that you actually want to bring into the timeline and start working with. But if you only want to use a part of your video, you can kind of cut away some of the unnecessary part uh, ahead of time. By going to a point in your video, by uh, double clicking on the clip over here in the media pool, and then left clicking where you want to set an endpoint, and then you hit I on the keyboard. You can also hit the in out keys, which are mark in and mark out in the bottom right hand over here. And then you find an out point or the end of the clip that you actually want to end for it, and you can hit O. So you'll notice in this bar down here that the parts where you're actually going to be importing to the timeline show as a light gray, but everything else, the parts which are being excluded, are left as a dark gray. Now you can find a location in your timeline, which could be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, in other words, the first frame of your video, or it could be some part later on. Um, now in order to add them to the timeline, you can use these buttons over here, insert clip, which if there is already a video in the timeline, it's going to push whatever's to the right of this insert point, which is this uh, red bar here you see. It's going to take everything to the right of that and push it forwards so that whatever clip you have 
can kind of fit snugly in between those two parts of the clip. You can do over right clip, which if there's anything in front of this red insert bar, it's going to effectively override it or delete it. And then um, it's just going to be gone. So be careful about that. If you do make a mistake, you can always hit control Z for undo and replace clip. Uh, you're going to be basically left clicking on a clip in the timeline that you want to replace. You hit replace clip and DaVinci Resolve will try to add your new clip in the exact same start and end times as the old clip. So because we don't have anything on the timeline yet, it doesn't really matter what we're going to do. So overwrite clip or insert clip makes sense to me. And you'll notice that the timeline has a lot of video on it. You can scroll to the end and basically see where the video ends. So now that we have a video in the timeline, you can see that this bar at the bottom, which is the scroll bar, got a lot smaller because now we're dealing with a video which is going to be at least six minutes long, at least until we edit some of it out. And we can scroll over to the very beginning and see that if we were to export this as the entire timeline, there would actually be no video for the first second here. So what we probably want to do is left click on this clip hold the mouse button down and drag it over to the left so that it lines up with the start of the video. So on the left over here, you might notice that when we added the clip in, that it was added to video track one, otherwise known as V1 and audio track A1 or audio one. Now you can have a lot more audio and video tracks inside of DaVinci Resolve as you can in any good video editor. So if I zoom out here and let's say we found a new clip, and we wanted to add that to video track two for some reason. Well, one way we could do that is to left click on this preview window and actually just drag the clip that we just marked it in out point four straight onto video track two, which if we hover above video track one, will be automatically created along with audio track two. Uh, we could also right click over here and do add track or add tracks. So in this case, I'll just do number of video tracks one, number of audio tracks one, above video one and below audio one, add the tracks in, and then we have video two and audio two. Now the advantage of having multiple video and audio tracks is that you can add things like images above your video so that you can have basically other assets in the same shot of your video. Uh, you can also add in music in addition to the voiceover of the video you recorded, which is very useful. You can add in sound effects, um, title sequences, uh, just about everything you can imagine that you've seen in someone else's video is available for you to add in here. So let's talk about a couple more things here. If you want to make a cut in DaVinci Resolve, you should click on this Razor Edit Mode tool. You can also hit B on your keyboard. And while you have this selected, if you hover over a clip with the mouse, you're going to see this little red line appear. That's where you're making the cut. So if you click with left, left mouse button, uh, it's going to split one clip into two. Now we can do something like take this clip over here to the right, which we say no longer want, hit delete, and it's just gone. So we have these two clips sitting on top of each other, and let's actually see what happens when we hit play on the timeline. So you'll notice that although there's no transition, it just immediately cuts between one clip and the secondary clip. So which clip was the one that showed up on top? That's the one in video track two. So whichever track is above on video tracks is going to be the one that shows on top. So you usually want to have titles and images. Anything that's going to be like an overlay on screen should go in a higher video track and usually video track one is where you're going to keep your original clips. Now, if you want to actually create a transition between those two clips, there's a few ways you could do it. Now, you could do something like hover on the left over here for this new clip and drag this little white notch icon over to the right. And what this will do is create a fade in effect very easily. And we could do something like that. So you see that it just transitions from one clip to the other. What's actually happening is that the clip on video track one is just sitting there, but video track two is fading in. And because video track two is on top, it does look like a normal transition. The problem is if you just do it like this, we have two audio tracks going on. Uh, you're going to have both audio tracks playing at the same time, obviously. So a better way would be to say, 
make a cut on video check one as well, where you actually want the clip to stop. Cut out a portion for the new clip to go inside, and then drag this new clip down into video track one. So now what you can do is say right click on the border between these two clips and do something like add 15 frame cross dissolve, one of the other easiest transitions you could add in. So if I hit play here now, you'll see that at least at a basic level it creates a decent transition. Uh, you might want to actually adjust the clip positions here. If you look at it, it's a little bit weird in how it transitions. Um, I'm not sure what's making it so jumpy there but it, it's part of the clip. So what we can do is go into trim edit mode and what trim edit mode will allow you to do is adjust the starting or ending points of a video clip. So if I use trim edit mode and I come down here to this clip and I left click it and then I left click on the border of the clip, you can drag the start or end point of that clip and basically adjust the length but also the starting and end point while keeping the transition intact. So if I zoom back out here now and I play the transition one more time. So the problem might actually be coming from the left here. So another thing we could do is just shorten this clip. So if you are in select mode, which you can get into by hitting A or this little arrow up here. And now we go onto the timeline. We can left click on the right border of the first clip in the timeline and drag this to the left. Now, the difference between this and the trim tool is that this is destructive to any transitions you might have. But now we can just drag the second clip over, right click on the border between them again, and add in a new dissolve. So now if we zoom out and play it back one more time. Oh, actually, you know what's going on here? The original transition I added in, where I moved this notch there, that's still there. I forgot to remove that, my bad guys. Just double check your transitions, make sure nothing weird's going on there. And now we can right click and add the cross dissolve back in. So that should be all well and good now. And now it should look completely normal. So the moral of that story is just always check your transitions before you go ahead and publish. Make sure everything looks right. Now, if you want to add in a more interesting type of transition, Go up to the effects library that's in the top left hand corner and you can go to video transitions. Here you're going to get a really long list of video transitions you can try out. So I'm going to drag this X wipe into the in between of these two clips, making it a transition between the two clips. Let's play it back here. So you can see it opens up like an X, which might be considered a little bit more interesting. Uh, another one I like here is Blur Dissolve, so let's play that back, and you can see it gets really blurry, and then it focuses again, but when it's done focusing, it's in a new clip. Now, if you ever want to change any property in a video clip, or a video effect, or even audio as well, you can select that transition or clip, and go up to the Inspector. Now, in the Inspector, you have a lot of different settings you can play around with, which can apply to transitions, uh, effect specific settings. Uh, if we click on a clip, you'll see things like transform, which is about changing the position and rotation and that kind of stuff. You can crop part of a video clip away, uh, just like you could crop an image in Photoshop. And you have a few other settings available there. Um, also, if you go over to the audio tab, when you click on a clip that does have audio, you get a clip equalizer. Um, which you can raise and lower the decibels of different frequencies. And you can also play around with the volume. Now, if you want an even easier way of changing the volume, if we come down here to where it says Audio 1, and I click on the border between Audio 1 and Audio 2, I can drag this down and expand the track, giving us a better indication of how the audio looks like in the track itself. This is the, uh, off the top of my head, I believe they call this the Audio Waveform. And if you want to raise or lower the audio, you can click on this line that appears here for any audio clip, drag it up to increase the volume, drag it down to decrease the volume. And if you do an alt left click, you can create these individual key points or keyframes where you can raise and lower the audio from. So if I lower it down here, you'll see that the audio gets lowered for only part of the video rather than the entire video clip. So, useful trick there. For the record, you can also do similar things like that with animation for the video clip. 
Um, another way you can do animation is in the inspector where you set keyframes at a point in time. And then, well, let's just go ahead and do a quick example. So if I click on the diamond here, it's going to set a keyframe for zoom, right? And then if I go a little bit further, I can set a new keyframe, which is basically a point where you hard set the value for whatever. It could be the position or it could be the zoom. Between those two points where you have keyframes, it's going to automatically try to figure out where the video clip should be. And DaVinci Resolve will try to automatically figure where everything should go in between those two keyframes. So if I zoom in here, and now that we've added a couple keyframes, you can see that there's a very similar thing to the audio keyframe setting down here for the video. You can see that the zoom goes up between these two keyframes now. And you can still do the same alt left click to add a keyframe. Uh, you can even use these tools up here if you want it to be a curve for better easing out or easing in. So if I click here and change it to a curve, you can see that we can get a much weirder kind of zoom effect. And I'll play this back so you can see it. So let's go ahead and play it. And you can see that the zoom is kind of crazy because we set a curve here. So it's actually zooming out, zooming in before it hits the keyframe and then zooming in further and then zooming out. So if I play this back frame by frame, you'll see. So if you are in the timeline and you want to move one frame, you hit left or right on your keyboard. So I hit right to go one frame in and you can see the original keyframes we set, it's just zooming in. But then we have the curve, so it zooms out a bit and then kind of weirdly zooms in, hits the keyframe, and then zooms in more and then zooms out. Basically, hyperbolic curve. Uh, basically, these are just mathematical curves. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about the math of them. You just need to understand that when it goes up, that means the value is going up. And when it's going down, it means the value is going down. So pretty straightforward there. Now, just a couple more things to cover in this tab. Uh, if you want a title in the effects library that's in the top left hand corner again, you can add a title by clicking on titles. It'll give you a few defaults. So if I drag text in here, it'll give us a very generic title. We can click on that title, change things like the text inside. Of course, in the inspector, that's where we change almost all properties. And say, I don't know, tutorial video or something. We can also change the font. Um, so I'll just change this to something kind of random here. Increase the size if we so desire. And we can also come down here and add in some drop shadow by changing the offset. So there's also a bunch more settings you can play around with here, but let's leave it at that for this video. Just remember effects library, titles, and if you want to change anything, it's in the inspector tab. So moving on to the color tab over here, which is to the right of the edit tab, just going to briefly go over this because I don't think it really applies to most people's video editing. So I'm only briefly going to talk about the color tab over here because I don't think it's relevant to most people's typical video editing. So if you want to make a selection of part of your video that's on screen and change something about it, whether that's like using a power window to add a square or a circle, basically indicating a region where you might not want to make changes. If you want to qualify part of your video screen through color selection or selection based on saturation, luminance, or even better yet, all three. Or if you just want to change the color or the brightness around on everything in your video clip, you can do all of that kind of stuff in the color tab. So over on the Fairlight tab, which is, of course, to the right of color, you can manipulate the audio of your video. Now, that could be doing things like adding in effects and plugins over here in the mixer. You can add in an audio input device if you want to record part of the audio. Like if you're talking into a microphone while you are editing your video, you're creating a voiceover. That kind of thing is done in the Fairlight tab. Um, you also can play around with the equalizer, the dynamics, um, kind of just change everything you want about your audio. Now, in order to get many effects for audio inside of DaVinci Resolve, you should go online and look for free VST plugins or even paid VST plugins. And what a VST plugin is, is an audio tool that's compatible with programs like DaVinci Resolve that can do things like filtering out bad noise from your video, 
uh, even of the audio in your video so that where it's quiet, it becomes louder, and when it's too loud, it becomes more quiet, evening things out like a compressor tool. So that brings us to the Deliver tab, which is the final step of editing a video in DaVinci Resolve 14. The Deliver tab allows you to take your fully edited video and to export it to a place on your computer or a network hard drive location. Now by default, if you look at the middle of the screen, it's going to say Render Entire Timeline. That means everything that's in your timeline is going to be exported from the very first second to the last second. Now if you don't want to export everything that's in your timeline for some reason, just like when you're adding clips to the timeline, you can use I and O to set in out points. So if I hit O here, it will create an out point. And you'll notice render changes to in out range, which means when we export the video, it's only going to be exporting this light gray area to a new video. Now by default, there's a bunch of preset settings you can use here, like YouTube, if you just want it to export to QuickTime.move by default. Um, you can click on the drop down there and make it 180p if you choose. Uh, Vimeo settings as well. But what I like to do is use custom settings and I usually change it from QuickTime to MP4, my preferred video format. If I'm using a video that doesn't need exceptionally high quality output, I might change the KB per second here where it says quality to 5000 per second. Uh, but that's because I usually screencast, so if you're doing any other kind of video, you might just want to let it be set to quality, automatic, and fast. On the audio tab here, you can leave it alone. AAC is the only real codec, and 192 KB per second is a good bit rate to export a video at. Um, and then on the file tab, you can give the file a name, basically what name is it going to have on your computer. So I can say here, edit resolve in 20 minutes hopefully the video ends up being about 20 minutes and yeah, i don't know davinci resolve 14 tutorial how's that sound and then when you're ready to export you just hit add to render queue you choose a location on your computer so it could be the desktop these are going to be um, the same folders that actually show up in the media tab so if you ever want to add a new one just hit add new folder either here or in the media tab to make it a permanent location for DaVinci Resolve to look for files or to export files to. And once you've done that, you'll have your job over here. You'll notice it's a render queue, so you can actually queue up multiple jobs. If you have multiple jobs, just hold shift down and select, uh, basically shift and left click to select all the jobs you want to export at one simultaneous time. And then when you're done, you hit start render. Now one last thing I want to show you guys before we go is how you actually save a render preset because you might not want to have to, let's say, change your format to MP4 every time you export. So if you ever want to save a preset, which is going to be the settings that you currently have selected here, so, you know, MP4, automatic best, whatever, the resolution, all that staying the same, you click on these three dots up here to the right of render settings custom, and then you choose save as new preset. You give it a name like tutorial preset, you hit OK. Let me zoom out. And what you're going to notice is over here on the far left, which you may have to drag the scroll bar to see, you'll have your presets over here. So I have my CT prep test preset, and now we have the new tutorial preset. And the same way, we can have that selected, go up here and delete that preset as well, if we no longer want it. So as you can see, DaVinci Resolve is a really cool program. There's a lot of things you can play around with there. And obviously, I'm not able to cover everything you can do in 20 minutes. But hopefully, what I've done is given you guys a really good starting place that you can go ahead, download it, try editing a video in it, see how it goes. And if you want to know more about how to use DaVinci Resolve 14, you can check out my courses on it on Udemy or Skillshare. Or you can just go on my YouTube channel and watch some tutorials that I have up there for free. So I've been Chris. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And I will see you guys in my future video content.